Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and this is question number eight from the October 2021 International A Level Pure Mathematics P3 exam. And this question here is about the inverse trig ratio for sine, arc sine, and we're asked to draw the graph or sketch the graph of f of x equals arc sine half x for the range of x between minus 2 and 2 and the range of y between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So basically the, the inverse of the sine curve is basically when you draw the sine curve okay you draw the sine curve with the x and y switched around. So the sine curve just imagine I'm going to draw y equals sine x. So let's just start with sine x forget about half x first just, just to understand what's happening. The graph of y equals sine x looks something like this between 0 and 360 and it goes on like this on the negative side so this is your origin this is pi over 2 it reaches a maximum of 1 and it goes to 0 pi and then minus 3 pi sorry at 3 pi over 2 it goes to minus 1 and then back to 0 again at 2 pi and it's kind of like this is minus pi over 2 this is minus pi minus 3 pi over 2 and minus 2 pi now if we were to draw the inverse of this, the x and y swap around. So it will basically look something like this. If we were to draw the inverse of this, it will not be a function because this is a um, many to one function. There's many um, x values leading to one y value. Okay, so a function that's a many to one, if you write, draw its inverse, it will become one to many, which is not a function. Right, so for us, for this to be a function, you have to restrict its domain such that it will not be um, a one-to-many. It has to be a one-to-one -one function. So what, what they do is they restrict it between, let me just make that smaller, between minus pi over 2. So get rid of all of this part and all of this part and pi over 2. They get rid of all of that part and all of that part. So the restrict is domain, is domain between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So then when you draw the inverse of this, this is one-to-one. -one. The inverse will also be one-to-one. -one. Okay, so when we draw the inverse of this function, it's like the y value, the y, the y axis goes here, the x axis goes there, kind of like uh, they swap over. Then the graph will look something like this, and I'll draw it underneath for you to see. The graph will look something like this. Now you're going to have your 1 and your minus 1 over here, and you're going to have your uh, pi over 2 up here, and your minus pi over 2 down here. So what's going to happen, it's going to go through 0, 0. And instead of going through pi over 2 and 1, it's going to, these two will swap around. So this is going to become 1 and pi over 2. So 1 and pi over 2, that's going to be over here. And instead of going through um, minus pi over 2 and 1, instead of going through minus pi over 2 and um, minus 1, sorry, it's going to swap around. It's going to go through minus 1 and negative pi over 2. So it's going to go through these two points here, and it will look something like this. Okay, well, not, not very well drawn. Let me draw it a bit better, because sometimes they're a bit, a bit strict with the marking for these sketches. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, and that's the graph of y equals arc sine of x. Okay, so now I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff up here. Get rid of all of this stuff up here. Okay. And get rid of these axes as well. Okay. And let me see. Was that straight or not? It wasn't even straight. It doesn't look straight, does it? That's better. Okay. I'm not seeing things very straight right now. That, that doesn't look straight to me now. Okay. So there we have. This is straight, isn't it? My eyes are deceiving me here. That's okay, yeah. Okay, that's better, I think. This is now straight, yes? Okay, according to this is straight, okay. Now, so here we have um, y equals arc sine x. Now, what I'm going to do is just move it up a bit. Okay, what I'm going to do now is basically we have to draw y equals arc sine of x over 2 which is basically a 
horizontal stretch of factor 2. The reciprocal of this x here has been multiplied by a half. Right? So if you multiply by half inside the function, then it's a stretch factor of the reciprocal of a half, which is 2. So the x values, they remain exactly as they are. Let me just write that neatly. This is pi over 2, and this is minus pi over 2. So the, the, sorry, the y values remain exactly as they are. It's the x values that are multiplied by 2. So what I'm going to do is just going to change this to minus two, to, from minus 1 to minus 2. And from, the, from this will be from 1 to 2. So the coordinate, which was um, now 1 pi over 2, under this transformation becomes 2 pi over 2. And the coordinate that was minus 1 minus pi over 2, the x value, becomes minus 2. And the y value stays the same as minus pi over 2. So this is the sketch of this graph now. Okay. And it's, as you can see, between the values mentioned, between minus 2 and 2 for x, and minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 for y. So that's the sketch of y equals arc sine 2x now. No, sorry, x over 2. Arc sine x over 2, or half x. Okay, so there is the answer for this question of sketching the curve C. So I hope that was clear. Um, now we're going to go on to part B. Part B says, given that x equals sine, 2 sine y, show that dy dx equals 1 over the root of a minus x squared, where a is a constant to be found. So we got to start with x equals 2 sine y, and we got to end up with dy dx equals, and we have to find that dy dx in terms of x, not in terms of y. Now, we can start this off by first finding, because it's difficult to make y the subject and find the, diff find the differential of y when it's in terms of arc sine. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the x dy first. Okay, the x dy. Um, so we differentiate this with respect to y instead of respect to x. So this becomes 2 times. Now the differential of sine of something is cosine of the same thing. So this is going to be 2 times the cosine of y. All right, now we want dy dx. And I could write dy dx equals 1 over 2 cosine y. Uh, but we're not finished because we want it in terms of x, not in terms of y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it in this form, and at the end I'm going to write dy dx because I think it will be easier that way to deal with um, the, the expressions we get. But I'm going to leave it like this, and in the end, last step, when we find what dx dy is in terms of x, I'll then write it as its reciprocal, and then I'll get dy dx. So first of all, we've got to think now, how do I write this? How on earth do I change this so it says x squared? Well, the clue is here. We can see that sine, two, sine y can be expressed in terms of x because we know that if x equals 2 sine y, then sine y is x over 2. So if I can somehow re, uh, change the cosine y to express it in terms of sine y, then the sine y I have in the expression can be expressed, changed to x over 2 or replaced by x over 2 and I'll have an expression with x in it. So how do I link sine y and cosine y? Well, an identity should should pop up in your mind, okay, that we know that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle will always equal 1. So that means that the sine squared of y plus the cosine squared of y equals 1. So I can write cosine y. So I'll say cosine squared y is 1 minus sine squared y. That means cosine of y is going to be the square root of. 1 minus sine squared y. And you can see how that's looking a bit kind of like uh, promising there. So that means if sine y is equal to x over 2, then the cosine of y is going to be the square root of 1 minus, and I can square this, because remember sine squared y is the same as sine y all squared. All right, that's what this means. So I can put x over 2 in here and square it. That's going to be x over 2 all squared, which is x squared over 4. That means I can replace the cosine here, the cosine y here, with the square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. So I can say dx dy is equal to 2 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to write this as one fraction inside this square root sign. So I'll have my denominator is going to be 4. So this is like 4 over 4 minus x squared over 4. So I have a common denominator of 4. This will be 4 minus x squared. All right. And I can 
separate the denominator and the numerator inside that insert form. So this is going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared over the square root of 4. Okay, we know that the square root of a over b as one big fraction is the same as the square root of a divided by square root of b. That's what I've done there. And we know that the square root of 4 is equal to 2, so these will cancel out. So we're left with dx dy is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we want to find dy dx, so we can just write this now as the reciprocal. So we can write this as dy dx equals 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. And that was exactly what was required. dy dx equals 1 over the square root of a minus x squared. So we can say that we found a is equal to 4. And we've got our answer. We have now found the, the differential. So the key was the key was to link x with this cosine y by the fact that sine y equals x over 2. And then if you can express cosine y in terms of, of sine y, which we did here, we can replace the sine y with x over 2, and we, we're done. So that's how you deal with such questions. And we're going to now go on to part C. Okay, part C tells us that the point P lies on the curve C and has y coordinate pi over 4. This is the equation of curve C, and this is the gradient function for the curve C that we found in part B of the question. So it says, find the equation of the tangent to C at P. So we got to find the equation of the tangent to this curve C at P and write your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. So now, to find the equation of a tangent, we need two things. Okay, We need to have the point that it lies on, which or the point that it passes through, which is p, and we know that the y-coordinate is pi over 4, so we need the x-coordinate of p. We already have the y-coordinate of p is pi over 4. So we need to find the x-coordinate of p, and the second thing we need to know is the gradient of the tangent, Okay, which we can find using dy dx because that's the gradient function for this. So we need the gradient of the function when x equals at, at the point p, xp. So if you find xp here, we can then find the gradient, and we can then find the equation of the line. So let's start with finding xp. So the x-coordinate of p is going to be 2 times the sine of the y-coordinate of p, which is going to be 2 times the sine of pi over 4. And we know the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, so this is going to be 2 times root 2 over 2, the 2's cancel out, you've got root 2. So we know the x-coordinate of p is root 2. So we know now, we have some information now, we've got, I'll write it down here, p has the coordinates of root 2 and pi over 4. Second thing is to find the gradient of this function. So we know that dy dx, as we learned, is 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared, as we learned from part b. That's right. Now, we want to find the gradient when x is equal to root 2. That's the x-coordinate of the point P where we're finding the, the tangent. So that means the gradient of the tangent, therefore, will be 1 over the square root of 4 minus, you're going to have root 2 squared, which is 1 over the square root of, this is uh, 4 minus 2, which is 2, which is 1 over root 2, which we can write here, um, in simplified third form as root 2 over 2. Multiply both bottom, bottom, top and bottom by root 2. It's best to leave your answer in terms of a simplified third. So we know the gradient of the tangent at the point P is root 2 over 2. Now we have to use um, our equation of the straight line. I'll use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And in the end, I'll express my answer as y equals mx plus c. So y minus y1. So y minus, this is x1 and this is y1. y minus pi over 4 equals a gradient, which is root 2 over 2 times x minus root 2. So you have y minus pi over 4 equals, you got root 2 over 2 times x. Now root 2 over 2 times minus root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Uh, you'll end up with 2 over 2. Okay, which gives you 1. So you'll end up with y is equal to root 2 over 2 times x minus 1 and plus pi over 4. And there is your answer. The gradient here is root 2 over 2. And the y-intercept is, you can say, pi over 4 minus 1. That's your y-intercept. 
And there we have the answer to question number eight, part C. So this question was all about basically the um, reciprocal trig function, sorry, not the reciprocal, the inverse trig functions, um, sketching them and differentiation, I guess. So that's the answer to this question. Other questions from this paper can be found on these playlists that you'll find in this area here. Other questions from this topic of, recip of uh, sorry, inverse trig functions um, can be found in this, top this uh, playlist. And differentiation can be found, um, P3 differentiation can be found in this playlist over here. And you may click on this link if you wish to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.